Hi my lovely creatives. I'm going to try out this granulation medium today. It is from Windsor Newton. It is colorless, so it looks a bit like water or an alcohol or something like that. And I'm going to add it to some paint and make a painting with it and see what happens. I uh, love creating textures and watercolors and this is new to me. I've never used granulation medium. So I'm really curious to find out what happens. I'm going to make a slightly abstract landscape. I have a reference picture um, which I'll show you, but it's completely different from what the painting is going to look like. I just use it as a bit of inspiration for the colors and I'm going to just have fun with it and see what happens. So I'll put this aside for a moment. So I'm just putting some extra paints on my palette. And I have this pipette, so I'm thinking of just dropping some granulation medium in at some point. But I'll start with some base colors and then I'm seeing what I am going to do with them. Actually, I have some of these colors here on my messy palette already, so I don't need any more of those. So, um, yeah, let's get started. I'm not making a sketch, I'm just going straight in there. I'm going with a large brush today. There we go. So, let's see. This is going to be the horizon. It's going to be quite low. As you can see, I've not taped off my paper. It's okay if it buckles a bit. Mixing up some green colors. I'm trying to create this look where the, um, the painting is sort of partly wet on wet, but I'm not wetting the entire paper. So here I want some bushes and some plants. It's going to be a bit of a fence this way. It's going to be in sort of English style countryside field. This is what I'm imagining. So I want the colors to be quite warm. It's got a lot of color on the paper already. You can see I'm adding in something that could resemble the sky a little bit. So.
I'm dropping in a little bit of this really warm brown just because I want the whole look and feel to be a little bit warmer. Let's drop in a little bit of granulation maybe and see what that does. Oh, it doesn't smell very nice. I dropped in a little bit and I'm just seeing what happens. So I'm dropping some in my paint as well for later. So, I'm moving it around on the paper a little bit. I think I need to let this dry completely before I carry on. Or at least, mostly. So, everything has dried a little bit and with a small brush I'm adding in a little bit more detail in the, uh, in the painting. So these fence poles, um, there's like a little... Uh, yeah, fencing in the picture that I want to add in. I quite like the areas that I've left white, so I'm going to keep it that way for now. But I want to add in just a little bit more to make it look like a landscape again. I'm very happy with the texture that the granulation paint has created, the granulation medium. It's a, it's a lot of fun to do and I like a bit of the unpredictability of it as well. I'm just having lots of fun with my painting today. Might not be the best landscape, or my most serious piece of work, but I'm just really enjoying the process and I really encourage you to do the same when you paint. Sometimes just trying out materials is enough fun. And I love the combination of this green, this mossy green, with these warm brown colors uh, that I'm using here. And I'm going to use a bit more of that for this tree. You can see. Trying to keep it quite loose. It's still pretty wet in places. So, um, you want the tree to feel natural, so not too straight. Slowly adding in some detail. Lots of small branches. I love painting trees, it's always so much fun. And the colors in the middle have some of this granulation uh, medium in them. So even here on the tree, the colors should split a little bit, sort of naturally. See what happens. I found a really fun part of this painting is that I don't wait patiently for my 
paint to uh, dry and I really slowly add layer by layer. I'm just going in quite bold with quite bold colors and that's a slightly different way of watercolor painting from what I usually do. I'm really patient and I wait for each layer to dry but I'm really enjoying it and I like the effect that it creates on the paper and the, the slightly messy look that it has as well. <laughs> it might not come as a surprise to you but I love trying out new materials and experimenting with materials that I have and then combine it with new materials and I very rarely use the same materials twice in exactly the same way and this is something I try to do a little bit more often so for example when it comes to my color pencil practice I really try to um, yeah to create sort of not similar pictures but to, to use the same techniques over and over but I'm always so tempted to add um, just a little extra technique or a new material or a different paper or yeah, to like a completely different reference picture or to change things up to keep things interesting and this is something that I do a lot and uh, I know it's in my nature and that's okay. Like this for example when I'm using this card it's something that I've only recently started doing scraping away some of the paint to create different textures and highlights and now I'm planning to do that quite a lot, so I really master the technique. But it's quite possible that I find something else to do quite soon and then that will be my new favorite thing for a little while. So you can see this technique is great to add in lots of little branches and little spikes. And because this tree is almost like an like a bush more than a tree. Where the base is sort of made up out of lots of little branches and to create that effect that card is wonderful. So I'm starting to add some leaves to the tree and this is a very familiar sort of color palette for me at the moment. My surroundings, the nature that I live in really looks like this every evening. It's uh, sort of the start of autumn so things are not completely red and orange yet but you can definitely see a bit of a change in color and uh, light and that the evenings become a little bit longer it becomes darker a bit earlier than it did a few weeks ago and yeah, you can really tell that there's a bit of a chill in the air as well it makes me want to wear a scarf and a warm jumper and it's uh yeah the, the weather definitely is turning more towards autumn and uh, even though the leaves are still pretty green, or at least the ones that are not dried out from this really hot summer, um, there's definitely a bit of autumn feel in the air. And that's the sort of intention that I want to capture in this painting. I want it to feel like it's an autumn painting, but not where everything is completely orange already. So I'm adding in some darker colors, some blues and some greens for the leaves. The uh, granulation medium has been added to this, so I know that this is going to be a little bit sort of irregular or rough around the edge. And the, what the granulation medium does, it sort of splits the paint and it takes um, the pigments in it and it sort of makes that clump together a little bit. I don't know, this is probably not the scientific way of explaining it, but it sort of changes the texture of the paint. And um, I really like that look. I love adding salt to my paintings as well. Salt is a really great way of adding texture to watercolor painting. But when you add salt, the uh, texture is usually quite rough and it really sort of collects around the area where you added the salt. And with this granulation medium, it's a little bit more gentle. It's a slightly different look to it and I think it looks very nice. I'm adding in some splashes of color in the background. I wanted to keep I want to keep this a little bit abstract. Not too too much detail. A bit more contrast in there as well. And because I'm working quite slow, everything is still wet but I can add multiple layers on one area because I'm quite happy for the colors to blend in together and mix up. I have some slow drying medium here as well somewhere. Um, I'll look it up and maybe use that next time to, if I really want to make a wet on wet painting, the slow drying medium would be a good help for that. I don't use it very often. It's another thing that uh, 
that I bought that I really wanted to start using and I usually um, again, get distracted with fancy new stuff <laughs> so a bit of shadow on these poles I like these shadows that I've created on the ground as well I know this is a very calm video and it's quite long um, I'd really love it if you tell me what sort of videos you would like to watch I create a lot of shorts as well and I make these long, slow, calm, mindful videos but do you prefer watching more of a time lapse or maybe more studio tours? Do you really want to see a painting like this all the way from the beginning to the end or do you prefer more of a sketchbook tour? I have lots of sketchbooks that I can give you a little sneak peek in the more I know about what you want to watch, the easier it is for me to create fun content. And of course I would always make things that uh, I love making, but within that range there's quite a lot of uh, things that I can include as well. As you can see I'm using this sharp uh, card again to add in some extra textures. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's not too difficult. There's a bit of an angle that you want to give to your card and once you have found the right angle and your water your um your paint has the right sort of amount of wetness or dryness uh, you can scrape away the paint a little bit and leave these lighter marks on the paper so what i'm doing here with the grass for example so my paper is loose from the table so i create some some textures that could be some grass or some stones or some things in the foreground. You can use it to spread out the paint a little bit as well. It's fun. It's, it's fun to use something that's a little bit different from a brush from time to time. And this is what it's all about, right? The joy of creating things. It's not about you know, being a professional artist or selling prints, it's about how much joy you get out of making things. And uh, for me, this is really the main goal, to bring joy to other people as well. Maybe give people a bit of confidence in their own artwork as well, because you can create so much more than what you might think. People are often really, um, yeah, a bit scared of making things because they're worried about messing up or failure. And I think that it's absolutely fine to mess up a bit sometimes. Not every painting you're going to make is a masterpiece, but every painting will teach you something. And uh, yeah, as long as you enjoy the process, that's the main thing. So I'm adding in some darker grasses here under these tree. They're going to be in the shadow. I think these uh, plants or these bushes in the background look a little bit like windmills at the moment. Um, maybe a bit of my Dutch heritage, <laughs> heritage coming through. I love a windmill. Uh, I grew up in Rotterdam and around Rotterdam in the, the polders there's, there's a lot of like, uh, really wet uh, nature lands around that part of the country. There are so many windmills. And, um, when I was a child, sometimes I used to go roller skating or something with some friends and there was always lots of tourists and they, they took photos of us and photos of the windmills and they were just amazed <laughs> about it, I think. It's just funny. It's strange when um, tourists come to the place where you live, isn't it? It's something that you find normal and then for other people it's exciting. <laughs> Back to my brush and I'm slowly going to add a little bit more contrast to the picture. I love that mix of the warm brown with the uh, yellow and the blue, so the, the green color. And um, sometimes I just like to mix all my colors up and see what happens to create a good shadow color. So this is what I've done. I added some of that brown to the mix. And I'm using that to make some of the branches a bit darker and add just a bit more contrast and slightly darker tones to the painting. So some shadows and some, yeah, some darker hues. So in the leaves, for example, here I'm adding in some splashes of that darker color and some branches. 
and it's a lot of fun just to see what happens and how these colors interact. I want that tree to feel like something that's three-dimensional with you know, lots of branches in the background and branches in the foreground and leaves behind the other leaves and, and a tree is not an, a flat object with only one layer that you can see. There's lots of stuff going on behind it and we know that it's round or sort of roundish. So um, yeah, I'm trying to create that effect by adding lots of layers to this painting. This seems really dark now, but usually when things dry up, it looks a little bit more matte and a little bit more muted. So I'm used to that and I'm aware of that. So some loose splashes. I think little splashes of paint is one of my favorite things to do. I said this was going to be a bit abstract, right? So it's okay if it's a little bit irregular, if the paint has a bit of a mind of its own. There we go, some splashes. Do you ever create splashes to your artwork? I would really recommend it, it's so much fun. You just have to be a bit careful not to accidentally splash um, everything else on your table, because that can happen quite easily. It is a lot of fun to add splashes of white paint to your painting as well when you're finished. Especially if you have a darker painting, then you can see it of course. This video is, um, is quite long, it's one of my longer videos. As I decided to not speed up the process, just show it to you as it worked in real time. No shortcuts. I think sometimes people forget how long it takes to make an artwork. Because there's so many time-lapse videos and um, like shorts and reels and all these like really short content videos out there that makes it look like people just snip their fingers and a painting or a drawing is there. But in reality it takes time to make something, anything. And um, that's a lot of fun, of course. But it's good to realize that sometimes things take time. I'm adding some small grasses with this dark paint and my small brush. Just adding some little scratches and marks and I try to be not too precise. This is the trick to um, try to uh, just create something like moves that feel quite natural and it's okay if they're a little bit splashy or if the mark is a bit too big or a bit too small or a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, the more I try to keep control over the look of this painting the harder it becomes so that, uh, that might feel like a bit of a contradiction but sometimes you just have to Go with the flow. <laughs> you can see I'm sort of pausing a little bit, thinking about it. Maybe these trees need to be a bit darker. Make them a bit wet first. You cannot always plan everything out. So I have this reference photo that I used sort of for inspiration, but I'm definitely not adding in um, everything in as much detail as it is in the reference photo. And if I want to make any changes to it, I can absolutely do so, because this is my own artwork and I can do whatever I want. If I want to put a pink giraffe in the background, I can do so. There's no rules. Sometimes people feel so confined by what they should do or what their art should look like or how they should use certain materials. And I try to uh, at least teach my creatives that they can do whatever feels good to them. It's okay if it's not perfect. You can also see that I did not tape the edges of my painting today. <laughs> it has definitely blurred out over the edge a little bit here, sort of in the foreground, and I quite like that. The, um, I taped the corners just to hold my picture in place, for, it's mostly for filming. But I quite like that natural sort of edge around the outside. Maybe some softer leaves. I'm coming towards the end of the painting part of this picture. 
I just want to add one more layer of darker paint. So you can see I'm making the leaves a little bit darker. There's no rule that says when you have to stop. So sometimes I can take my pictures a bit too far and then I think, oh, I wish I had stopped a little bit earlier. And sometimes I stop and then I look at it later and I think, oh, I could have pushed that a little bit further and carried on. And you don't always know when that exact point is. It's a bit of a balance and it also just depends on when you, when it just feels right or when you stop having fun. So I'm adding in a little bit more shapes in the background, maybe some smaller trees that are sort of a bit further away. And I often stop when, just when my time runs out, really practical. Or when I feel that I have achieved the look that I was going for. Or when I... I don't very often stop because I feel my picture is ruined. <laughs> if I go through a stage where I feel like my picture is awful, I usually manage to go through that and um, keep adding more until I'm finished. So spontaneously I decided to add some really soft shapes in the background. So I'm using a very watered down watercolor paint. Just a bit of the same green. Just to add some shapes on the horizon that make the horizon look a little bit fuller. Maybe it's mountains, maybe it's a forest. There's something in the background here. Just a few more darker splashes in the sky. Just to see if I can make the blue a little bit more vibrant. I really watered down. And I decided that I am finished with the painting, or at least with the painting session of today. Because I wouldn't be me if I wouldn't want to add a little bit of color pencil to my artwork. One of the main reasons that I wanted to do this is because I really want to use my new set of Faber-Castor Polychromos pencils. Um, you saw me unbox them in a previous video. And I just can't get enough of them, so I really wanted to use them. And I love adding color pencil to my drawings. And today I'm not going to add that much. I'm quite happy with the picture as it is. So it's just to add a little bit of extra texture here and there. Color pencil has such a unique texture and it's different from paint. And I just wanted to add in here maybe some little branches here and there. Or make the shadows a little bit harsher. Just to have a little bit of fun with it. I love using yellow color pencil to make that sunny sort of glow um, on the edges of my artworks. And it's something that I do a lot, <laughs> maybe a little bit too much even. I just absolutely love it. So I often go around the edges of my drawings or my paintings and add a little bit of that sunny um, shine to the drawings. I think I just like to live in a world where everything has a bit of a sunny edge. So I'm drinking my tea. I never used to drink milk and tea but since I moved to England uh, this is what I drink. At least one cup of tea in the morning and then usually I switch to uh, peppermint tea or chamomile or another herbal tea. I love herbal teas. See, I'm going to add some of those yellow around the tree as well to see if I can really make this feel like the beginning of a sunset where the shadows are really long, where the sun is quite low already and everything has that beautiful golden light. So there's a fence here. This is one of the best things about living in the UK is that there's walking paths everywhere. And usually there's uh, some fences, but often there's like places where you can climb over it, like where you're supposed to climb over it. And there's a little sign saying footpath, and you can follow it into the fields. And this is just absolutely amazing. Um, in a lot of other countries, walking paths are much more um, yeah, made out of tarmac and a bit more serious. But here, they're often like these tiniest, muddiest paths that go through the most unexpected of places. And I just love it very much. So, I think I have some white highlights as well. 
white pencil works really well over paint and I like adding some highlights that way. So with my dark green I'm adding a tiny little bird here, but I'm not sure if you'd really notice it if you knew, if you didn't know it was there. It's sitting there on top of the fence. Some birds in the sky. And that's it, my picture for today is finished. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you got a bit of this nature, calm vibe that I have been feeling whilst making this. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to my channel. There will be many, many more painting and drawing videos coming. I've got lots in the pipelines. So make sure you subscribe and that you click on that little bell to find out about everything that I've been posting. And if you painted a lot, make sure you let me know or share your pictures on social media and tag me in it because I love seeing them. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you around soon. Bye bye.